is a Dale C. Bronner. If you would, turn in your Bibles, St. John chapter 15 and verse 3. St. John chapter 15 and verse 3. Here you'll find these words. The whole chapter is in red, so this is Jesus the Christ speaking to us, Yeshua. And he says here in the third verse, You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. You're already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. And I want to talk today from the subject, cleansing words, cleansing words. I ask you this question, who do you need to cleanse with your words? Who do you need to cleanse with your words? Who do you need to cleanse with your words? And before answering that, I ask you to ask this, whom have I defiled with my words? Whom have I defiled? Every now and then, you have to let your mind run back about people that have gotten up underneath your skin, and you got mad and said things that you shouldn't have said. And, uh, and now we, we have to come back and ask ourselves, whom have I defiled with my words? Uh, was it an ex-husband, an ex-wife, an ex-boyfriend, a girlfriend, a son, a daughter, a mother, a father, a, a friend, a neighbor, a co-worker, a classmate, somebody that works at a place that you frequent? I mean, have your words defiled somebody? Who do you need to cleanse with your words? Whom? Whom do you need to cleanse? And I love a statement that Dorothy Neville said, she said, the real art of conversation is not only to say the right thing in the right place, but far more difficult still is to leave unsaid the wrong thing at the tempting moment. That's a real art, to leave the wrong thing unsaid at the tempting moment. And we need to ask God for help in that area because the tongue is a deadly evil that we can't tame in our own strength. Your tongue has got to be brought under the, uh, the control of the Holy Spirit to say, God, help me, help me to hold my peace. Now listen to this. If you will learn to hold your peace, you can keep your peace. You don't have to voice every thought that comes to your mind. I mean, some people like, I mean, whatever it comes to their mind, it comes out. They have no sense of censoring anything. Now let me say this to you. A thought will die unborn if it is not spoken. The moment that you speak a thought, you give pneuma, pneuma, breath, life to it the moment you speak it. The devil can put all kinds of thoughts in your mind. We are not obligated to speak the devil's thoughts. He can't get it into the earth unless you put it in your mouth and speak it out. He's looking for people that can voice his power in the earth. He has no authority on the earth, and so he has to come through Adam. He has to come through mankind. We give life to demonic things in the earth. You see, the devil is looking for a host. If he wants to hurt people and injure people, he'll use a host because you can do more damage with your tongue than you can with your hands and your feet. Words hit harder than a fist. And you have to realize that you can choose to be a, a giver of life with what comes out of your mouth, or you can be one that will perpetrate death wherever you go. Our society is filled with so much profanity and bad words and negative statements and criticisms and judgments and put-downs and comparisons and gossip and backbiting and mealy-mouthing and uh, complaining. And, and you can feel dirty just because of something that someone said to you. I had somebody to say something to me one time, and I, 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 just, I was sitting at the table. I put, put my napkin and start cleaning my ears out. They asked me what in the world I was doing. I said, I feel like I am defiled. I said, you have spoken harsh words to my virgin ears. How dare you contaminate me with that filth? And I, I just took my tissue out and just, just started uh, wiping my ears out because I felt contaminated by what had come out of their mouth. It, it's, it's amazing. Uh, and, and how they said that it, it takes about 11 positive statements to undo the damage of one negative statements. 
Isn't that interesting? 11 positive statements, and you'll be surprised how many negative statements that children hear in their own home, and then how many negative statements that they hear in their school. You'll be surprised how many put-downs folks uh, get in various places. When you work in places where you serve the general public and some of the nasty looks and comments and criticisms and complaints and gripes, and you can become defiled simply by what came out of somebody's mouth. The, the scriptures are uh, just loaded in the wisdom of the Proverbs about things telling us, teaching us about our tongue. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 24, notice, put away perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. These are admonitions of the Holy Spirit writing through the wisdom of the Proverbs to us. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 11, the mouth of the righteous is a well of life, but violence covers the mouth of the wicked. It's interesting. It gets into the earth through their mouth. Do you know that when a man dies, his spirit leaves out of his body through his mouth? Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. You will be surprised at what happens in your mouth. Proverbs chapter 18, verse, uh, verse 10, verse 18 says, Whoever hides hatred has lying lips, and whoever spreads slander is a fool. Let me say that again. Whoever spreads slander is a fool. Touch your neighbor. Say, I know that person. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 18, reckless words pierce like a sword. They pierce like a sword. It's like they make a hole in something. And once somebody has damaged you with your words calling you stupid, dumb, how could you, you ignorant. So you'll be surprised at the negativity. And then once they calm down and apologize, it doesn't cause the hole to close up that they pierce you with. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You've been hurt because of some negative thing that somebody judged you in a moment of time. They judge your whole life based on one thing that happened. We all make mistakes. What a terrible thing it is to be judged forever and esteemed that this is who I am based on an event or something that I did. And for them to associate what I did with who I am and to be called dumb because I made a dumb decision or to be called stupid because I said something that was stupid. And they have associated the act with the person. You are not what you did. You are not what you did. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 3 says, He who speaks rashly will come to ruin. It says in Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 28, A scoundrel plots evil, and his speech is like a scorching fire. A perverse man stirs up dissension and a gossip separates close friends. A gossip. Anybody that will gossip to you will gossip about you. That's a word to the wise. My, 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 my. I'm telling you, you better watch it. I'm telling you, if they find out your dirt. See, gossip is a habit. It's an evil thing that flows out of a spirit. That's a, that's a, that's a lustful thing that just cannot wait to get out and try to uh, destroy you. It's a part of the spirit that is an accuser of the brethren. One of the things that the Lord hates. Uh, Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 20 says, He whose tongue is deceitful falls into trouble. It says in Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 6, A fool's lips bring him strife, and his mouth invites a beating. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, I know that person too. <laughs> you know some people that have gotten beat down just because of their mouth? You will be surprised how many beatdowns that you can avoid if you will learn to put a governor on your mouth. Listen, you don't always just have to say something. You know, it's like whatever they feel that comes up, comes out. Don't let everything come out. We can't handle everything that'll come out of your mouth. But please, I mean, you can stop so much domestic violence by just learning to hold your tongue. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 7 says, A fool's mouth is his undoing. A fool's mouth is his undoing. You ought to resolve that you're going to let your mouth be a wellspring of life and encouragement to others. We're called to be proclaimers of the good news. 
the good news. May I tell you, the good news is not only your testimony. The good news is the story of Jesus Christ, his birth, his life, his resurrection, and, and all of that. That's a part of the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Your life ought to be a living epistle that testifies to the glory of God. Before you speak words, you ought to always put it through the think test, the think test, the T-H-I-N-K, the T, is it true, is it true, the tr is it true? You don't have to tell certain things if you don't know it for a fact to be true. And then don't even tell it just because it's true, ask the H question, is it helpful, is it helpful? Well, maybe this, it is true about their past, but is it helpful for me to spread this to other people? Is that helpful? Then I, is it inspiring? Is it inspiring? Should I share this? Is it honestly inspiring? The N, is it necessary? Is it necessary for me to even say something about it? And then the K, is it kind? Is it kind? Put it through the think test. Put it through the think test. Is it true? Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? Put your words before you speak through the think test and become a giver of life. Think before you speak. Say, think before you speak. There's a wonderful organization called Words Can Heal, and they ask their, their followers to take this pledge. Here's the pledge. I want to share it with you. It says, I pledge to think more about the words I use. I will try to see how gossip hurts people, including myself, and work to eliminate it from my life. I will try to replace words uh, that hurt with words that encourage, engage, and enrich. I will not become discouraged when I am unable to choose words perfectly because making the world a better place is hard work. And I am pledging to do that one word at a time, just one word at a time. It was a brilliance of, Socrates, of Plato that said, wise men talk because they have something to say. Fools talk because they have to say something. I know that you know that person too. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29 says, in the, in the New Living Translation says, don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Let your words be an encouragement to those who hear them. And the, the King James Version of it, it doesn't say it quite that way. It calls it corrupt communication. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. So just so that we are clear about what corrupt communication is, in case you were wondering whether I'm guilty of corrupt cu communication, I want to give you a list of them. Bragging, using profanity, gossip, angry words, lies, judging others making discouraging remarks, embarrassing and humiliating people, excessive fault-finding and criticism, complaining, whining, rude and inconsiderate language, teasing, manipulation, ethnic and racial slurs, sexist comments, age-related put-downs, being negative, always pointing out what's wrong, threats, arguing, interrupting, not letting the other person finish, being a know-it-all, false flattery, yelling, talking down to people, being condescending, and blaming and accusing others. All of that's a part of corrupt communication. Now here are some questions that I want you to consider the next time that you are tempted to say certain things. Ask yourself, would others think differently of me if I constantly use this kind of language? Would other people honestly think differently of me if I constantly use this kind of language? Do educated and cultured people talk this way? I encourage you, speak for the kind of job you want, not the kind of job you have. You've got to start acting on the next level before you'll ever get there. Ask this question, do people in important positions of leadership use this kind of language? I mean, when I hear the President of the United States talking this way, would the President of a, uh, of a Fortune 500 company speak this way? 
Do you think uh, some people might be offended when they hear this kind of language? These are just some questions, just that help us to monitor what we say and how we say it. And then, what do I reveal about myself when I constantly use this kind of language? You have to really be careful about the kind of language that you use. More than 60 years ago, Dale Carnegie said, any fool can criticize, condemn, and complain, and most fools do. And do you know even what some teenagers said about people who constantly use foul language? These are statements that came from teenagers. Teenagers said, folks who use bad language, that they are angry. They said they are uneducated. Teenagers said that they are rude and inconsiderate. Now this is the opinion of teenagers. They have limited vocabularies. They aren't creative or imaginative. They're clueless. They have filthy minds. Did you know that the Bible says in Psalm 107 and verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. May I just tell you, what I'm talking to you about today is not something that I just read in the Bible. I, I am talking about the life-giving things about words. Words change an atmosphere. They really do. Think of yourself like this caterpillar who spins a silk cocoon based on what comes out of its mouth. Think about that. We're just a worm. We're just a worm. And what comes out of our mouth creates the cocoon in which our metamorphosis will take place. Now, you control what you are transformed into by what you spin out of your mouth. What comes out of your mouth creates the atmosphere in which you will step to develop wings or whether you'll remain a worm still crawling around in dirtiness. But we can become, grow into wings. We can develop our wings and break out of our cocoon if you speak the white right words. Speak to where you're going. May I just remind you of this, that whenever God begins to talk to you, he talks to you about your future and not about your past. Even the devil does not waste time over your past because hell only reacts to your future. It's not concerned over your past. If the devil is attacking you, he's not attacking you over where you have been. He's attacking you over where you're going, and he's trying to stop you from having effect in your future, so he's messing with you now. He tried to kill all of the children, not when Moses had grown up to be a teenager, but when he was a baby in a basket. That's when he sent out the decree, when in infancy, when Jesus was an infant, Herod sent out a decree to let all of the male children be killed. He wasn't trying to stop his past, he was trying to stop his future because there was a word that was in him. All that you need is one word, one word from God will change your life. Just one word. You ought to wake up sometimes if you ever get in confusion, if you're ever in dereliction, if you're ever, your, your life has ever gotten into places of discouragement and lethargy and depression, you need to ask the first thing before you do anything, is there a word from the Lord? And if you can just get a word, just one word from him, just one word, and he's not interested in speaking to your head, God speaks to the heart. He wants to speak to your spirit. God wants to talk to your spirit. He wants to talk right to you. You just look, he's looking for people that have an ear. Let him that hath an ear hear what the spirit has to say to the church. Will you remember when the reason, reason that God speaks to your heart, not your head, is because your real ear is in your heart. H-E-A-R-T. Your real ear is in the heart. That's why God speaks to the heart, because that's where your spiritual ear is located. It is speak to my heart, and what he speaks is a word. One word from God will change your life. One word from God can deliver you. Just one word from God. And you don't realize how many times your atmosphere is being poisoned in your own house by words that are spoken. When you speak words that build up and that edify and that celebrate and appreciate, you change the atmosphere. That's why God says, come in, I want you to come in, enter into my gates with thanksgiving and into my courts with praise. Don't come in with your negativity. I know you've got that. God does not inhabit the gripes, complaints, and criticisms of his people. God inhabits the praises of his people. He says, when you come to me, step correct. 
Come on a positive note. Don't you come to me mealy mouth and telling me what's hurting, what's all been going wrong. You better bless the Lord. I mean, even when things are bad, they could have been worse. You ought to say, Lord, I don't have the best car, but I thank you for this one. Even if I got to hold my foot on the brake and the gas at the same time, even if I got to park on a hill and pop the clutch, I'm going to do what I need to do, Jesus. I, I, I'm, thank you. It's not as good as it could be, but it's certainly not as bad as what it could be either. And for that, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I bless you. I'm telling you, whenever there's a real word of God on the inside of you, just one word will change your life. Just one word from God can change your life. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Until next time, God bless you.